Hi everyone, this is Chetan Nayak. This video is about detections and evasions with Sentinel-1 and how Blue Turtle tends to evade it. So most of the time, whenever you are facing an EDR, they will have a certain set of user land hooks. So for example, I have a simple notepad.exe which is open. If I let it play, we can see that we have a DLL called as inprocessclient64.dll which is responsible for performing all types of hooks in Sentinel-1. Now this is common across various other EDRs as well. For example, you can have you can take a look at CrowdStrike or uh, maybe let's say for example um, a Silence or any other EDRs. They will always have one user land hook which gets added to your process, which is responsible for actually hooking um, a lot of um, function pointers that you have in the Windows DLLs. So if I quickly search for let's say NT allocate virtual memory, sorry, over here. NT allocate virtual memory and if I go here you can see the jump instructions that have been added <coughs> similar would be the case for let's say NT protect virtual memory and you can see a lot of other things so uh, similarly uh, your sentinel one does perform a lot of hooks over here in the uh, not only in NT DLL but also on kernel 32 and a few other places so if you take a look at let's say kernel 32 and if you search for load library you can see there's a jump instruction here. If I double click on this, it eventually lands to another jump instruction. And if I double click on this and another, you can see that I eventually land to in process client 64. So if you're going to use reflective DLLs, uh, like the ones with Stephen Fuhr, which is responsible for loading uh, DLLs from uh, its uh, RX region, you are bound to get caught and your process will be killed. So this brings us back to the question on how to evade it. There are a few more uh, tricks that Sentinel-1 applies apart from just uh, hooking the uh, DLL. So I have a very quick example over here. As you can see, we have three different ways to find the region of DLL into memory. Most of the time when you want to uh, dynamically identify the function pointers of a DLL, you will first need to find the DLL's address in memory. These are uh, three common examples that I have added over here. Maybe not the most common one, the last one. The first one directly extracts the uh, PEB offset, the LDR, and finally reaching back to your DLL base. Over here, we are extracting the original DLL base and over here the entry point. If we are able to find our DLL's address in either of these, we will be able to just walk back the PEB and find out the main entry point that we have. So let's see how this would work. I would go here and this is my Windows 10 system. To show you how this can become a bit complicated when you're dealing with Sentinel-1, let me explain this. If I type, let's say, uh, dt nt exclamation, uh, let's say, I'll type exclamation peb, we have our LDR data table over here. If I type dt nt exclamation LDR data table entry, you can see that we have a few uh, objects here. Uh, at offset 30, we have DLL base, which is what we are extracting over here. And if I scroll down, you will see an original base at the offset 0x f8. Not, not a lot of people know about this specific offset. And then you also have the DLL entry point. So if you are able to find this address and uh, perform a walk back, you will eventually reach the base address of your DLL. So there are multiple ways as to how you can extract this information. Now let me uh, typecast our PEB address that we had over here and see what each of these information look like. So I'll take this LDR address, I'll type DT NT exclamation PEB LDR data, <coughs> I will typecast it. I get the address for my in load order module list which is of data type LDR data table entry. And let me typecast it. So you can see our first value that we have is cmd.exe over here and the base address, the entry point, and this base address would be similar to the ones that you see over here in original base. So we can extract your DLL's entry point in this way. You saw your uh, base address of your DLL. So the second value does the exactly the same by extracting the 0x f8 offset from over here. But however, this becomes a problem when you're dealing with older systems. So if I go to Windows 7 and if I type DT NT exclamation LDR data table entry, 
you can see the original basis is at a different offset unlike our previous one so until unless we know in which window system we are you cannot use this technique and currently this is the one that i know of which works with sentinel one so if you go back here and if i quickly compile this to see how it looks like hyphen o find ll.exe let me go back to my folder here a refresh i will open a cmd prompt and let's see what we have so when you run this you can see the dll base in peb itself is hooked we have the original base and the entry point is also less than the original base that we have which means even the entry point is hooked in this case and we cannot use original base because the offsets are different and until un unless we know in which system we are you cannot use this so you can still go ahead and use this if you know you are going to target windows 10 specifically and you can extract the offset and use it however we cannot use that in our case because in root retail we need something more dynamic so that we don't have to actually uh, keep on identifying whether it's windows 7 or windows 10. now another thing to notice here is that if i add a quick get char here to block the exit of our code let's see how this actually looks like in memory I'll go back here quickly. I will search for find DLL. And uh, you can see that we have a lot of DLLs loaded. However, here's the interesting thing. You can see the DLL base entry point, which is basically your kernel 32, a uh, weird name over here. Similar is the case with your NT DLL. So these are custom mapped uh, memory regions of your Sentinel-1. And this is the original region for kernel 32 and NT DLL. If you uh, let me open another uh, window here, let me go to the memory section. Let's uh, stack it. Now, uh, let me stack this as per the uh, base address here so that it's easier to identify. Let's take a look at this region that we have that is B30000. So you can see that our B30000, which contains B31000 is basically rx region of our kernel 32 which was manually mapped using a different name and there is a guard page around it so what sentinel one tends to do is that the moment you extract this base address using any of the known uh, c2s uh, right uh, the existing c2s that currently have they will try to extract this value from the peb but the moment they extract this they are reading up this specific region which will hit the page guard that you have over here the moment it hits the page guard, it will catch the exception using vectored exception handler and kill it directly over there. Similar is the case with uh, any other hooks that you apply. So if you just take a look at these values over here, it applies a lot of hooks to your, let's say, load library over here. So if I just follow it up, sorry, my bad. If you follow this up, you would see it eventually lands to in process client 64, which is again the DLL of your uh, Sentinel-1, which means that it not only applies your hooks to your uh, memory regions, but also uh, not only your DLL memory regions, but also to your PEB and a few other places as well. So this is just one of the uh, starting points of Sentinel-1. And I think that is one of the reasons why I actually like Sentinel-1 myself, because most of the known C2s or uh, existing payloads won't be able to evade it until unless they know how it actually works internally, unless until you have actually reverse engineered it and understood how uh, the DLL actually works. And that's where my payload of brute retail comes into picture. So let me go back. And this is currently the upcoming release that we have in brute retail. So you can say it's a V version 1.2 that I will be publishing in the next few weeks. I will start this right click and I'll build a default payload, not even the stealth one. The stealth one is specific to ETW for ETW TI, the kernel based evasions. Now, normally the previous versions of the payload are detectable. I won't say detectable, basically, they get caught in the exception handler that you have over here. So, these exception handlers that are added by your um, Sentinel 1, the previous versions of the payload uh, does tend to hit this page guard, and uh, once you hit this, it gets caught. However, the upcoming list that I have, it, as I said in one of my blogs earlier, it does not use any type of reflective DLL. At the same time, it also does not uh, use any type of memory allocation altogether. Uh, till the previous release, there were uh, there was uh, a scenario once you execute the uh, stageless payload, 
it will allocate some memory and copy itself over there. However, with the new release that I have in the upcoming uh, few days, it does not tend to have any type of memory allocation altogether, which means the user can simply allocate one memory region and he can basically back that by a DLL module in memory or something else. And the payload will just execute from there without relocating itself. And this only happened because I was able to recompile the GCC compiler to make my own custom PE, which uh, has its own memory regions and sections so that I don't have to worry about my payload being non-position independent and not executing in memory. So with my custom PE format and custom PE loader, I can simply have a single region without relocating itself in memory. And uh, if we go and execute this, let me, yeah, I have created this payload over here in my documents directory. And I have a simple script over here, sorry, my bad, which is uh, basically uh, using a loader that I have. And this loader simply compile, convert, uh, renames it to bin and compiles it over here. So if the page guard and all of these predictions are there, uh, my payload should be killed right there and then. So let me execute this and let me create my payload. So I have this exe. So in this case, we have this exe of 341 kilobytes, which loads our shell code into memory and executes it. So I will go back here and I'll kill this. Let me see if I have my, yeah, I have my bin to inject.exe and I will execute it. Let's see if we have a shell and you can see that we have a working shell here. I'll just double click, it opens it up and let me see if our DLL is still loaded. So I'll type list underscore modules. Mm, let me search for, let's say uh, in process over here. And you can see that we still have our memory regions that are currently loaded. Uh, sorry, the in-process client 64 from your Sentinel-1. If I go back and let me take a look at this, how it works. And if I go to the, uh, let's say, thread section, sorry, uh, the threads are all backed. Let me take a look at the DLLs that are currently there. You can see we have the in-process client 64. We also have the kernel 32, the fake kernel 32 as well. Let's uh, take a look at the NTDLL. We still have that over here. Let's see if we have any guard pages around it or are they been removed. So let me see the module region was CB00 and for this one it was B400. So let's see, we have B400. We can see the guard page is still there even for the uh, other one, you can see the guard page is still there, which means uh, Blue Turtle will by default try to bypass these guard pages that you have and still allocate itself in memory. And if you quickly take a look at any of the other te uh, evasion techniques, for example, you can see we are 3184, our thread region. You can see that it's totally valid, like any other uh, thread that you have. So it will simply take up the uh, stack of other thread and make it look totally legit in this case. So this is a quick example of how Brutretel evades Sentinel-1. There are a few more videos that I will be posting later on for evading other EDRs and how they actually work. But Brutretel is probably one of the uh, few C2s which actually evade them in memory without doing any kind of modifications altogether. So yes, I think that would be it for this video. And uh, for any inquiries, you can contact me on the uh, link below in the channel.